Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamila Mizik, and welcome back. We're still three years off, but Centerville MP Reese Shipman is putting it out there from now. He'll be running in the 2022 general election. He yesterday made it clear in the House of Assembly that he will be running in the next general election and that he will win. And he's not ruling out the possibility of that victory coming as a result on his decision to run as an independent. At this time, it is far-fetched to think of independent uh, running as an independent because of integrated Missouri fabric of the, the party. Um, and I believe in what successful um, believed in. And so it, would, so it is far-fetched um, at this time. Um, however, like anything um, uh, we all do, if the direction of the party is not in keeping with um, the institution of which I was a part of building, then obviously um, uh, that would be a little bit, that, that definitely would be a little bit too much, um, that, too much differences at that point. On the other hand, he said he hasn't been approached by any political... Whatever party would be cautious because they would probably wouldn't, uh, they, you know, they would think that it would be difficult for me to, um, to uh, move. But, you know, the, the thing is, um, like I said, Ms. Cooper, nothing is ruled out simply because my purpose is to, first of all, do the will of God and, and to do the will and serve a purpose in terms of um, ensuring that the Bahamian people own the Bahamas and own their country and, uh, and, and, and that's really what I'm about, you know. On the other hand, he said he hasn't been approached by any political parties, at least not yet. While the Public Accounts Committee's one member down now that Mr. Chipman has thrown in the towel, his reasons are outlined in a letter to House Speaker Halston Moultrie. One of them, the fact that Killarney MP Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has publicly called the committee functionless. What else led to his decision along with his relationship with his party leader was shared during an interview with JCN's Leah Cooper. The Public Accounts Committee, a pretty powerful House-appointed group that, if necessary, has the power to investigate government spending. Sounds great in theory, but according to Centerville MP Reese Chipman, the committee's not functioning the way the Westminster system intended it to be. Reason enough to call it quits as a PIC member. Well, the, the idea of resignation always takes some time. And of course, there are things that you do in order um, before you determine that that would be the case. And so I think after seeing that none of the select committees were being um, uh, brought forward on the agenda, after noticing that the, there was no scrutinization of the public accounts um, by the Public Accounts Committee, after recognizing also that um, none of the six committees of the House have ever presented a report in 20 months, I just thought that it would be in the best interest um, in terms of educating the Bahamian people on the House uh, to resign. Mr. Chipman says he submitted letters requesting certain things from House Speaker Halston Moultrie regarding timelines for presentation and that the committee met to determine a way forward with regard to the select committees. Still, after 20 months, Mr. Chipman says the PAC made no progress. I think it's really incumbent on us as politicians to help to educate you young people and the Bahamian people on what are the What's important, which is the, the rules and the regulations of the House of Assembly, so that we know that the persons that we voted for are representing us to the fullest. Mr. Chipman's decision to part ways with the PAC comes nearly a year since his firing as chairman of the Antiquities, Monuments and Museums Corporation. In his defense, the freshman MP at the time claimed the AMMC was operating outside the law. Since then, he has stood his ground against his government on several critical issues, primarily the 60% increase in value-added tax. Still, he says he, his party, and his party's leader maintain a professional relationship. I think sometimes, you know, you, you do need, in order for us to meet the capacity um, building of our um, organization, you know, sometimes you just need, you know, you have to 
agree to disagree or disagree to agree you know um, but and as far as the relationship is concerned you know I feel fine and I think that you know it, it's just um, what partisan politics is you know Mr. Chipman says if there are any disagreements or challenges the party's members must be obligated to make it work for the betterment of the country reporting for JCN News I'm Leah Cooper. A resolution conveying just over an acre of land on Romer and Ambrister Streets, Fox Hill, for the sale of 10 service lots sailed through the House of Assembly yesterday following a full day of debate. The lots are to be sold to first-time homeowners. But PLP MP Picewell Forbes insists this will not help the country's larger housing crisis. To that, Housing Minister Ramal Ferreira strongly urged those in need of land for a house to stay focused and not pass up on this opportunity. Don't let nobody steal this moment for you. This isn't about PLC or SNM. This is about land and a house for you and your family. I encourage all the women say all Bahamians to apply to the Department of Housing. This is a fundamental human rights issue. Fundamental. We intend to replicate this throughout the Bahamas and roll it out. And even if there's no money in the bank, the minister promised that the Bahamas Mortgage Corporation will still work with those looking to own one of the properties. The government's looking to sell the properties at the same price as those in the Sunset Close subdivision, and that's at $20,000. In that case, police, defense, customs officers, teachers, and nurses caught the first pick. The government's getting low marks on its handling of the Bahamas' World Trade Organization accession. The Democratic National Alliance making it clear in a release that it wholeheartedly supports the principles of a free market economy and initiatives that will provide a fair global trading system. However, DNA deputy leader Arinthia Komalafe is convinced the government's failed to make a case and that furthermore, the Bahamas is not ready to accede to the WTO. Mrs. Komalafe expressed concern that vulnerable sectors will be further challenged and unable to compete with nations equipped for mass production or exportation. This, she said, is consistent with the widely held view that the WTO structure provides a greater advantage to developed countries and the obvious detriment of small developed nations. As an alternative, the DNA proposes that the Bahamas explore bilateral, plurilateral and sector-specific trade agreements with its main trade partners, with the sole criterion being in the best interests of Bahamians. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.